Hi, everybody. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about something yeah. like that. Can even make it there? Yeah. I'm going to speak about something so that. Oh, yes, you're right. It's on something that I've been discussed. For, in fact, yeah, I have two parts in my presentation. So one is uh, how to improve the latency of the CFS task. And the other part, which is probably the most controversial part, is how do you interface that with user space? And how the user space can help to say which task should be scheduled first, I would say, or in priority. So let me start. So yeah, I'm going to... I can skip that. So. Just, I just want to remind to everybody what the CFS is about. It's about sharing C CPU between a number of tasks and having a fair share of the CPU time. It's really about CPU time more than running first. And the goal is that the task with the lowest CPU runtime should run first. And that's what we are doing almost of the time. We have few, I would say, another. In order to be efficient, we can in sometimes delay a bit this switch, but normally that's that. The lowest view runtime run first. Now, when we have <clears throat> several tasks with almost the same time, but different goal, so um, why should we not schedule the tasks which are latency sensitive first? Because this will not break the fairness between, between the tasks. That will just reorder instead of having a kind of a if the VRUN time is few microseconds lower, you will be scheduled first, but that doesn't make any real difference at the end from a, a, a scheduling period point of view. So that's really about that. Reordering the task scheduling, as long as we are quite close in the, in the, in the amount of time we have run so far. So yeah, the goal of my patch, I send an update or five days ago, is to add a latency in for the CFS entity. I mentioned I'm seeing entity and a task because this can also be applied on C group and their scale entity. So the goal is really to, to add this kind of int and to try the, to schedule this, the entity with the, lat, the most, which is the most sensitive to the latency first and to do that for each level of the schedule group. So either you don't want to preempt a task by something that don't really care to, to be scheduled fast. I mean, we have some background task. I will have an example where it don't, doesn't care to be scheduled right now. You want this, uh, I would say, sketch slice, but that can be in 10 milliseconds, that's fine. The opposite, we have other tasks that want to schedule first because that it's part of a display pipeline, for example but it's not an RT task. So we have to share the CPU, but why not giving in this four milliseconds, for example, in priority? And as I mentioned, because yes, that's something I really care about, is the goal is to not break the fairness and to not give an unlimited amount of time to some tasks just because they are latency sensitive. And usually that should make sense because usually when, <clears throat> if you are latency sensitive or if you are interactive, normally you should be short running task. You have to, to wake up regularly and to do something. That can happen sometimes that you need more time. But in this case, I would say the latency is no more problem. You just need to get CPU. So <clears throat> this show what is done at wake up right now. So the first one, just showing you what, what is happening. So when a task wake up, we compare its variant time with the current one. And unless you're four milliseconds for an eight CPU back in the past, you will not preempt the task and you will wait the next tick. Okay. And what I'm proposing is to be able to, to, to move that um, in the range of the scale latency, which is which can be seen as the scale period where almost all the tasks should be scheduled. When you have a lot of tasks, it's extend because you, you can't uh, 
bring the, the, the runtime of each test, but yeah, usually that can be seen like that as the virtual scheduler. So the goal is to say, <clears throat> instead of not preempting unless you are more than four milliseconds in the past, for some tasks which are latency, so um, yeah, low latency tolerance, so some tasks which are time sensitive, even if they are in the future compared to the current one, as long as you are in this skate period, you can still preempt it. You will use your skate slice, then go back to schedule either because you have finished or because it's the time for another one to, to, to run, and that's it. So at the end, normally you should, you should not break the fairness, you will just reorder the way. And at the opposite, if you are tolerant to some high latency, you can say, okay, even if I'm in the past for several milliseconds, I can wait the next tick and we will compare our current time at that time. And then I can, I can run if it's the time for me to, to come up. Uh, question, yeah. yeah. So how are you handling the case where you have something that is like relatively CPU bound, but is like sleeping and waking up like constantly, but it's still, it's still doing work every time it wakes up. So it looks like you'll hit the, basically you're, you're modifying the wake up preemption boost, but you're yeah. going to get this preemption like all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that uh, not a problem? You, you mean between a, sorry, can you repeat? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm just, uh, so basically you're saying that something wakes up, yeah. right? Um, and you're not supposed to preempt what was running, not but you'll yet. preempt it anyway, yeah. right? Because you, because you have the hint. Yeah, so the int, yes, is used. Um, so, or maybe it's in the, so what I have done is that, uh, yes, I'm using a latency offset. And when I'm comparing the VRUN time, if I have two tasks which are latency sensitive, so I'm taking into account the offset of both the current and the waking up, which means that if you try to preempt uh, an already latency sensitive task, you can't because you're, you both want to run first yeah. and you come back to the default behavior at the point. So, and if you're not able to preempt, that's what I have put later is that, uh, I, so I haven't gone in the detail, but I have a latency sensitive waiting list, which can be used so that if you can't preempt the current one or if you're preempt because it's a RT task, for example, so you can't preempt the RT task. When it will be time for the, CFS scheduler to select a task. It will check if there is a latency sensitive task that just wake up. It will put that first. It will redo this comparison of your own time and that's it. But as soon as you wake up, you will remove from this list and you will be back to the normal. It's really for the wake up. And uh, <clears throat> so That's uh, so that just give you the kind of range at wake up. So yes, as I mentioned, it's really about comparing scale entity. So the inside a C group, between C group, and then to root level and so on. I don't know. I haven't the main. I have done that like that mainly, mainly because it's quite efficient, and you don't have to go through all the hierarchy, which can be painful at wake up. You want to to wake up fast, but if you start to go through all the all the hierarchy that can uh, slow down everything. So, but we can probably consider doing, uh, propagating some kind of latency if need be. For now, I haven't seen any real use case of that. So uh, yeah, how, how do you propose to set that? I mean, you just set it for the final task or you want to set it at every level? I will, I will mention that at the end because that's probably the, the part that will be, that will raise most of the discussion, the interface, that's why. Here is the, uh, what I want to do, and then it's how we, we communicate with, with, the, with the user space. So what happens when everybody asks for the cent? If everybody wants uh, as a, a set is offset to the highest? Yeah. You, you, you're just compared like, uh, like now. You're back to the, because uh, what I have done in order to be quite easy is that I'm just, I have the run time, I'm adding this kind of latency offset on both the current and the waking up entity. So if both say I have a high latency, in fact, you will have, you will read. My question will... isn't really that both, but do you have to search? No. Okay. No, because you, it's only against the current. So the current, we already- Current, current and the next. Yeah. Okay, all right, thanks. 
Uh, are these entities typically the same weight, or do you think the latency sensitive ones are going to be weighted much more heavily? Because ideally, you'd want to wake up the low latency ones, or the, the ones that are not latency sensitive on CPUs already running other non latency sensitive tasks, rather than target them to wake up against latency sensitive tasks. So I right now I'm only happening when we check um, if we can preempt the current one. I haven't done anything typically when we are selecting a, a CPU in the select idle symbling or in the wake of it. I haven't done anything yet there. Maybe that we can do some kind of improvement, especially when we are comparing the previews and the target. If there is an obvious choice to do, yes, that can probably be done. But I haven't done that yet. Uh, yeah. Time to go back to Joel's question. What if you have like two tasks that are both like same priority level, so same nice level, and they are also busy loops, let's say, but one is doing like a micro slip every five milliseconds. Is not that the corner case where you end up using the CPU only for that task? So when you say same, same nice priority or latency nice priority? Same nice priority. So you should give like 50% CPU to both yeah. tasks. But one is the OG and it just does like one microsecond slip every five milliseconds. So if one, uh, it's all about the VRUN time. Yeah, I exactly. Don't... But we end up always refreshing the VRUN time for that task just because it goes to sleep. I mean, uh, if it goes to sleep because of IO, it's one reason. If it goes to sleep because of a micro sleep from user space, then probably you can abuse the. Right now, I don't make any difference between an IO sleep and a normal sleep. Yeah. That's, um, That's where I think the, yeah. the, the task that does the sleep it can take more CPU and break the fairness. No, but you can't because it's only at, at wake up. But at, at the end, let's say that, for example, you have, if one task start, start to wake up every, I would say, wake up every millisecond and run 90, 999 microseconds, at the end, your VRUN time will continue to, to increase and you will go outside this range of the skate tire. So you will not be able to preempt anymore the other one. But we have normalization of the run time when you wake up. No? Then you're kind of back to where you started, right? Because you have latencies again, no? Sorry? So, it, yeah, so the VRUN time moves forward. Yeah. And now you're outside the window. Yeah. So you, the next time you wake up, you this won't happen. So isn't that like you're back to where you started? Yes. Right. Yeah, because it also means that you have used more all, already all your uh, running time budget. That the point. It's like a temporary boost. That the point is just that as long as you are not trying to use more than your runtime budget, you're, you will run first. If you start, and that's really what I, I don't want. Otherwise, yes, that's a way to you wake up. You just do a one microsecond sleep, and you will get a full budget. No, it's not possible. Essentially, a rate limiter, right? Yeah. I mean, the other thing uh, uh, which I guess you're not doing is trying to make a decision on where to wake up. This is just on wake up to your brain. Yeah, no. Right now, it's only at the end when you have, after selecting a CPU, should I preempt the current running task or not? As I mentioned, I haven't looked. Maybe we can do some obvious, cho obvious choice earlier, but I haven't looked at that yet. Okay. Because we start to be, should we select an idle CPU or not? that start to be a, a more raise more discussion to be honest right i mean it's not just just the idle cpu right can oh. we take the most oh sorry least busy cpu in where we looked when you mean uh, around the non idle cpu or around idle CPU? around non idle cpus around non idle yes probably at wake thing we can probably look at the pre the the priority of the current between previous and next and target and take the one with the lowest one to get more chance to preempt. That should be doable. It's quite straightforward. It's just one, I would say, one comparison. That should be doable, yes. Vincent, in a corner case where you have the current task that is running at nice minus 19, but it has not set latency nice, and you have the waking task, which is probably at nice 19, but it has a latency nice of minus 19. Yeah. It's more latency. So in that case, it would 
it would preempt the current task because it is more latency sensitive, but it probably would not run for long enough, right? Yes, that, that's yeah, but that that's yeah, that's I agree. Thing. Yes, if you have only if you can run let's say one millisecond every second because of your nice priority, if you if you if you want to run more than one millisecond, you will be. <laughs> you really screw up. So latency lies only about how quickly can you get on the run queue, not how long can you run on the run. That's, no, that's no. still nice. Yes, right. yes. You're just reordering at wake up. So yeah, so maybe I haven't mentioned that much, but we have it's a signed value, so you can ask to be to preempt in advance the current task when your latency is sensitive, but at the opposite. You can say that I don't care. Just uh, let me be scheduled at the next tick. And if you look at that bench, which is a use case where we have this kind of problem where we have a lot of tasks that waking up all the time, preempting each other. And in fact, the task doesn't make any progress before being preempted. And that's especially true in the process mode. And I think it's probably because you have to switch the, the MM context between each thread and so on. So I have run the hack bench with two nice latencies. So the first one is the this one, the default value. <laughs> and here I just put that to net uh, latency nice 19, saying that just wait, I don't mind. And you see the benefit just because you, you're minimizing the number of preemption and context switch, and that's it. So if you know that your tasks don't really care about being scheduled fast, that will just improve, you will, from a statistic point of view, you, there is more chance that you will have a full slice because you will have weight really at the end of the, the, the skip period and you will not be preempted unless there is a latency sensitive one. Okay, I will try to. So here, then, it's <clears throat> I have done try to, um, to characterize on the opposite side. So what I have done is that I'm running a cyclic test with a nice latency nice priority, it's minus nine, uh, 20 in this case. So which means I'm really sensitive in the CFS uh, scheduling class, and at the same time I'm scheduling a bench with a lot of thread, which create a lot of uh, noise and. A lot of worker preemption uh, condition with the default priority. So in this case, I bench as the default, the normal wake up uh, behavior. So <clears throat> you can see there for latency zero for the cyclic test and latency minus 20. So uh, I will, so this is um, the patch set without, without the last patch of the patch set. So we can still see that the max latency is almost the same. I mean, I have 58 and 82 milliseconds in one side or the other one, but that really changed. The max value can vary a lot. <clears throat> Just because uh, without the last patch, there was some corner case where you can be preempted by RT and so on. And then in this case, you're back in the, in the normal way of working and you have to wait your, 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 your turn. But nevertheless, you can see that if you go up to the 99 uh, percentile, so you're still quite low, which means that almost all the cases you have been able to preempt in advance. Whereas with the normal, you are above, so yes, my histogram was up to 20 milliseconds. So that's why the 99 percentile is above 20 milliseconds. On the other side there, so I have just added this, this additional uh, RB3 for the waking latency sensitive tasks. So it's only tasks which have a negative latency sensitive value. <clears throat> and this have been able to cover this kind of corner case there. It's just because that if you are, if you wake up in advance and you are preempted by an RT task or whatever, or, or um, a stop class, you will be put in this waiting list because we consider you haven't been able to, to run your, your slice at wake up. So you will have another chance to run first. That, that was able to cover the... So we see that, yeah, the difference up to 95% is quite similar. That's really cut 
the end of the tail of the long latent. And uh, so we haven't seen any major difference if you if you if you use the default latency nice value. There is almost no difference because it's probably I think I haven't I can't remember exactly, but that's probably something like read of a field in the scale entity and a comparison. So that's quite that's almost nothing compared to the other other uh, things that we are doing. <clears throat> so that was for the implementation and then the interface. So the goal of the interface is to let user define a priority or being able to prior prior prioritize the task between each other. So the goal is to have a signed value because you can say I'm latency sensitive or the opposite, I'm not at all. Uh, there were several attempts to find a generic interface. Uh, the one that I took was done by Pratt up there. And the goal was to use a latency nice priority, be quite similar to the nice priority. Because, uh, you know, uh, it's already the case when you're setting a nice priority that you don't really know how much CPU bond with, with, you will have because you don't know who else is running on the CPU. So the goal was to be the same, to, to give a kind of a, um, a relative priority instead of more than a, a, an absolute priority. So that's what I'm using for the task, for setting the priority of a task. So on the C group side, yes. Uh, can you just expand a bit more on the latency nice priority? I mean, what does what does it translate into the absolute offsets? Um, I have a table, so the I'm going so uh, I have an offset which range between uh, minus uh, scale latency up to scale latency. Um, minus twenty is minus scale latency, and the, the latency priority nineteen is the factor of two. Yeah. Time. So it's a linear of things. Oh, I have linear. just, yes, linear. And I guess a bit that I, I still, I had problems earlier when we were doing this. It, it did not translate well across different CPUs, right? I, I, does it translate well here? Not, not more, because it's not at all that it's not related at all to which kind of CPU you are running on. It's really about right. on the wake, check wake up, uh, preempt check wake up in the scheduler, and that's it. So you, you can continue. I can ask later. Sorry, we can talk later if you want to finish. The, uh, so I was going to ask you uh, just about the interface, right? So we have a real problem with latency of tasks within C groups. Because if you have a C group with tasks that are latency bound and uh, IO bound, for example, then at the root level, the you know the the whole C group can look like it is CPU bound, you know, in, in terms of its V runtime, yeah. right? Because you compare the V runtime on top. So I was kind of thinking like this sort of hinting is good, but for this problem, I feel like the hinting should be sort of automatic because you have a task inside the C group yeah. that is that's supposed to be like uh, low latency, right? Because C CFS gives oh. gives tasks that sleep a lot. It gives it a dynamic priority boost already, right? Yeah. And it should be allowed to run. So how would you solve that, right? Because the V runtime is combined for the entire C group. So yeah. I was thinking like if that, if for this problem, because you're hinting at the SCAD entity level, if you can make the hinting automatic somehow and give that C group lower latency than, you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so that yeah. the task inside the C group that has been sleeping a lot will actually get, get a chance to run. <laughs> so yeah, for, for now, yeah, that's uh, in the C group, I have added a CPU latency interface, which on which you can directly set this offset between the scale latency in the scale latency range. So there was some discussion. Uh, Tejun was not re was a bit concerned about having a nice value. He would prefer an absolute value. So that's what I have put. To be honest, I don't know if people who will use this can really make a sense of the value they will put. For example, minus 20 milliseconds, what does it mean at the end? 
<laughs> compared yeah. to minus uh, 20. Yeah. That, uh, but yeah, I don't have any strong opinion. Maybe I'm, I, maybe I'm too focused on the internal to know exactly what will be really useful. Are you sure you need more than one bit? Yes, I think so, because you have to, you can classify, uh, that help you to classify between, I mean, saying I'm latency sensitive, uh, if you start to have only a true or false, everybody wants to be uh, latency sensitive. Well, everybody's going to ask for minus 20 anyway, yeah. isn't that the same Maybe. as setting the bit? Yeah, but we can, and with us, with, with the C group, we can, uh, I can easily imagine the system manager to, to classify that a bit, just like RT. That's I mean, fair. That, we, the yeah. system manager could do it, okay. We, with RT, we have the same. If you ask, everybody want to have the highest RT priority, but the system manager just have a better knowledge and can just order the things. For me, that's quite similar. But that's, um, yeah, I don't have any, I think this is working well, and this have been, yeah, that was the last slide. This have been discussed quite a while, so that's why I have just, I just wanted to reuse what all the discussion that have been done by Prab, by Joel, maybe also um, Patrick. So there was a kind of consensus on, on this interface. Yes. Okay. Uh, take take a, a mic for the online people. What do you do when you have a CFS task in a group, right? And you, you apply this value to the group and these, the task has its own value. Is it somehow aggregated or do you take the group value? No, right now it's really pair levels. I mean, if, if you set um, latency nice of a task, that will be done inside the group. Mm -hmm. And then the group, you, if you want the group to be scheduled before others, you will have to set the latency of the group. Okay. So it will be scheduled. It, it's about the shared entity for the group. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. And, and, and last thing, uh, we, we started this whole latency nice thing for the workloads where we che where we check the CPU we're going to put stuff on yeah. or we wanted to consolidate CPUs. I think this was past use case. But we, we, we said uh, immediately that it's hard to define latency nice for those use cases. And that's why I think you came yeah. up with something more sane. Yeah. That's why, because uh, when we... We have now also uh, people saying that maybe it's it's nice to find the next CPU, which yes. this is something we started off from. So yeah, that's that. Okay. We are back to something which become more and more uh, platform specific because some people uh, uh, on that I, I haven't any real answer. Okay. Thank you.